Hi, everyone, and welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriela Handel, and I'm a draftsman and also the host of the show, A Conversation About Art. During each episode, I look for the meaning of art and beauty through conversations with colleagues in different artistic fields. Today, I offer you episode 74, and I will have this conversation with artist Yelena Lamb. If you'd like to support this podcast, you can do so by liking and sharing this video and also by subscribing to my audiovisual channel. These uh, are all immediate and at no additional cost to you. If you'd like to show your support with money, it's also very welcome and appreciated. You can do so by purchasing my drawings directly from my website, which is GabriellaHandle.com, just one word. You can purchase crafts in uh, I make from eBay. You can buy prints of my drawings or you can leave me a tip. The links for all these things will be in the caption. Thank you for your time and attention in watching this episode, and do leave a comment so we know you are here. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, Yelena Lamb, thank you very much for agreeing to talk to me today. Welcome to a conversation about art. You are episode 74. Please tell our listeners and viewers who you are and what you do. Uh I'm an artist. I came from Russia to the United States in 1995 with my family. And since then, I live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, well, um, what should I start with? I've been, I've been drawing and painting since childhood, as many of us artists, I believe. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and um, Somehow I always knew that I am going to do something art related um, in my life. I went to and graduated from the art college in Russia in St. Petersburg. Um, My major was art and art restoration. So I I wanted to be an artist, but I think neither I nor my parents believe that, um, that I will be able to do like, you know, just uh, pure fine art and that's it. So I wanted to be, wanted it for it to be something applicable and art restoration seemed very reasonable in Russia. I loved it. Mm-hmm. But soon after I graduated, uh, I had two children, twins. I have twin boys. Now they're oh. adults who are growing up. Okay. And then we moved to the States. So I never had a chance to work as an art restorator. And mm-hmm. here in the United States, uh, it was kind of impossible to find any employment or even try to be an art restorator just because this field is so limited, just because all most of the paintings in the museums, they're like, you know, very well, um, the, the climate control and everything. So it kind of makes no need to, uh, like in Russia, we like in each museum, probably uh, is it, at least like 30 years ago, 30 plus years ago, it was like, you know, um, cooling and heating, like the summer, all paintings are like one with sudden <laughs> behave. <laughs> and so, and the restorators are needed. So anyways, not the story here. Um, I went to the Art Institute of Pittsburgh um, and learned how to use computers and was working in graphic design for many years. And you well i would say like five six years ago i've I've been painting on the side but uh i started painting more when um again when my sons um started driving so one of them i had all this time i could use and i got back to painting and then gradually i think my uh, art was becoming more and more full-time and my graphic design job was becoming more and more part-time and so now I'm mostly fine artist for myself. And also a um, few years ago, five years ago to be exact, I started painting animals. I was not painting okay. animals before, I was painting anything else. I yeah. was painting as a style. Uh, if anybody looks at my works and that's like, like still some online and also on my Instagram profile, they're like more cubistic with um, geo- some geometry, like lines, shapes. I've, I've been playing with bright colors, exaggerated. Um, just kind of trying to find my own style. And 
then the thing happened that my cat got my cat became sick and i was really really sad and devastated and i, I painted his portrait and wow. that's how i started painting animals so it just it, it, it was it just happened it's like i mean i i realized that that's 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 my really my call and i was happy doing this so what started as my own art therapy uh, completely changed my career as an artist okay and my cat is alive and well by the way he, oh good <laughs> yeah. good yes yes he went through we had we had to give him like um three surgeries and, okay. and he's fine he's a main coon he's a large cat like 30 pound <laughs> <laughs> okay okay <laughs> okay well um i'm sorry were you gonna say something else oh no i, I was gonna say that that's pretty much it about myself and okay <laughs> I don't um know. okay um so you were saying how for some reason you always knew that there would be some kind of art art, art related path in your life mm -hmm. um or that you would be doing something related to art where do you think that came from did your parents say anything did either of your parents do any art related or maybe somebody else in your family do something art related and they were encouraging or is there something like that in your life in your early life uh well something like that but um none of my none of my parents or relatives uh clearly nobody in the family was an artist um my parents my parents are were engineers um my dad's still alive and well um and they um i believe yeah the, the family family story is that my teacher my preschool teacher told my parents that she thinks that i have some artistic abilities okay so and i really i did like to draw things like you know maybe like all kids do but maybe mm. i did it a little maybe more or better than my other kids so anyway that's how that's how it started and then while in um school like through elementary and middle school i was attending classes in like secondary school uh, which was art school so i was taking art classes i was taking art lessons kind of preparing myself for for this art college i ended up going to and so that's how it happened okay. and my parents they were like really they, they were um encouraging me on every step of the way mm -hmm. and um and again we lived in a different country it was it was russia it was soviet union and it was many years ago it was different country different stories so it's kind of like you know nobody nobody was nobody there i was afraid that i won't make a good career or there or then i won't be able to make any money though i as i mentioned i was studying art restoration so it kind of was like you know like a um thing that this profession was applicable and mm -hmm. yeah it could kind of if not guarantee but at least like you know uh i had a chance of to be you know to find a job but the, again back in that old country the situation that was there like 35 years ago now it's all different story in, in this country and in that country <laughs> so. um so Mm, okay, so then you were able to practice your art restoration in, I mean, was it while Russia was still Soviet Russia or like yes. before and after? Well, uh, before, and I, I, I wouldn't say that I was able to practice my skill because as pretty much as soon as I graduated from my art college, um, I had, um, I gave birth to my children and Soviet Union collapsed and then we moved to the United States. So it was like, yeah, I never had time to actually even be looking for a job as an art restorator there. So it's kind of like my art restoration career ended before it ever started. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So... Um, when you moved to the United States, you moved not yet, not just with your now new children, but also with your your parents. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Uh, also, my sister and her family and our parents joined us like a few months after. Okay. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. So, okay, so then while you were in Russia, it was still the USSR. And then in that case, the, so you already had, I mean, in that kind of, in those circumstances, like you already had the plan of like, I'm going to do art, but it's going to be art restoration. So I'm not going to have to worry about what I'm going to do because you, at, at that point you had decided that you were going to do art restoration. Um, right. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Okay. So then, okay. So then, okay. So then. How did you find your way, I guess, to making your art practical when you got here? Because, for example, um, you said that after after painting, after making the portrait of your cat when when your cat was sick, that after that your art career, like as a visual artist, took off. So then, how did that happen? Did somebody see the portrait that you make of your you made of your cat, and then they were like, "Oh my God, you want you have to paint my dog or something like this?" Or how did how did that happen? Uh, well, um, as I mentioned, I've been painting before then, uh, while also working as a graphic designer uh, okay. for many years. So that's pretty much graphic design. That's how, how I paid my bills for like mm -hmm. almost 25 years here in the States. Um, and painting on the side, doing local art fairs, right. and again, playing with this style. So uh, what happened, uh, okay, so my cat got sick, I painted this portrait, then I got this idea that, oh, wow, I can paint other, like, you know, people's pets, mm -hmm. and maybe I'll uh, raise some money for my cat's surgery, so it wouldn't be bit wonderful. So, um, my son, who is a marketing specialist, he helped me advertise on Facebook, but it did not go anywhere because no one, like, you know, re replied. No one actually knew me. I didn't really have an, I didn't have a name in the South Wall at all. Mm -hmm. And, um, but some of my friends, few of my friends, they are uh, commissioned their pet sports. And I, and that's how I started, I started painting people's, uh, other people's pets portraits and I actually did get few commissions not from online but you know from people who already knew me and wanted to help so mm -hmm. I you know built it there I'm really grateful to them uh and then I started I started painting other animals I started painting other animals I started um just because you liked painting animals yeah just okay. because it's like yeah what happened that uh it it one of the kind of it did feel right for me it, and it also i it's through my whole like you know all these um efforts to find my own style and that's why i painted all this you know geometry and all this style what stylized kind of like paintings so that all that became not necessary because I realized okay I can just like use my skills and I need to hone my skills now because now I saw like where and what I need to do to to become a better painter mm -hmm. so okay. I realized that, oh okay yeah go ahead yeah no I mean I, I I just I'm curious about you're using the expression that it was right for you mm -hmm. the um painting the painting of animals why do you think it's right for you uh well uh because it did, it, it feels good. It feels like I'm doing something that I don't know. It's hard to describe, but it feels it feels like 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 I need don't need to invent anything. I don't need to fake anything. I don't need to try hard to like you know to go over my head to make to make a statement or something. Not that I don't want to make a statement. Not that I don't want my art to be meaningful. But um, anyways, it did feel that, um, and, and also I liked the results. I was liking the results. I was liking that my animals or my painting, that they have characters. And those other people also commented on the same thing, like mm -hmm. my Instagram followers, and I was getting more and more followers. That also a good thing. So then um, I started selling more. Then I got, I entered, I joined All Painters of America. I entered the piece into their Eastern regional competition. It got accepted. That was my first large national show. 
where my painting was accepted. Nice. And so that was kind of like, you know, the, like just a sign, okay, I'm doing something right here. And then same piece uh, was a finalist for um, uh, ARC Salon. So that was also kind of like, yeah, you're doing, you're doing something right here. So that also felt right. And so it kind of like a combination when it, it was all coming together. So it doesn't mean I'm going to be like paint, painting only animals forever. Like I'm painting more people now okay. and uh, enjoying it and loving it. And my gallery wants to see more people from me, which is also a great thing. But I'm kind of like, you know, I'm painting people then, okay, I need to paint an animal or I need to add an animal. So people and animals, that's the mm -hmm. thing I'm working on now. And okay. I really, really love to explore this connection. And okay. This yes. All right. I really like the transition from your, you know, you, what your day job in quotes mm -hmm. to fine art, because, um, I guess a lot of the time or what I hear really very often, I think, you know, from motivational speakers or something, something like that, they're like, yeah, just quit your job and, um, something like that. And then, then just do follow your dream and then that's it. And, <laughs> and it's like, that's really it's really short-sighted and it's not helpful <laughs> to when not. somebody, when you want to do that seriously, because it's not that it's impossible. It's just that, you know, you don't just quit your job or, you know, maybe they're like oversimplifying and just getting to the moment when the person finally quits their job. And then they already had like this foundation going for what they're going to do afterwards. And they're just completely not mentioning the other part. But at the same time, I just feel like I have heard it, mentioned or said that way so many times that I, I just I feel like there's something wrong there but anyway I just really like that you found your way um in that path um there's there's uh this guy that I follow on Instagram uh his name is Amir Odom and he he does some political commentary and stuff but he's like really positive and really uh level-headed and you know he can kind of see both points of views and then but this is what I think and whatever and then he talks about how he transitioned from being uh, not a graphic designer, but um, like a community man, I don't know, something related to social media and some big company that he was in. And then now he's doing like YouTube videos and his social media stuff and he has a newsletter and this type of stuff. And so he said that very thing that you're talking about, that it's like, no, I had a, I had a like a day job, quote unquote. And then I kind of planned this out to see how I was going to transition so that I wouldn't be like without money, you know, just not having any money to be able to sustain myself while I'm trying to find my way in this other thing. Um, and I, I guess, I guess I'm just like kind of, uh, kind of like loitering around the subject because there, the, there was no such thing. I don't remember having heard such thing for myself when I was younger. And I was like, okay, I want to be an artist, but I have no idea how to do it. You know, and I, I mean, I, I, I have the impression that lots of other artists feel that very same way. And so like, because um, I'm from Panama. So in Panama, there is, or I don't remember hearing at least this, like what you did which was, I, I just, I had this graphic design job and I, and you know, I'm going to transition out of it and then transition into fine art, which is what I want to do. In Panama, it's like, no, you just, you just get a, get a real job in quotes, get graphic design, get architecture and just forget about the art. Just do that on the side. It's like, it's not going to work. It's like very negative. Um, but I just, I like hearing, you know, that you were able to find your way here. I mean, did your, like that, did your family your parents, did they ever like give you advice or something? I don't know, like when you were looking for jobs or when you were trying to transition into fine art? Uh, well, they were, but uh, you know, obviously when all my career, whether like graphic design and then art, when it all started and was happening, I was already kind of a, you know, big girl with two kids of my own. <laughs> so, uh -huh. But obviously like, yes, uh, they, they were supportive as supportive as they as they could my mom especially she was always um she was both she was very supportive of my 
you know, me making art and very critical of it at the same time. Oh, uh -huh. so yes, she, um, I think deep inside, she never actually believed that I could make real money with just like in my paintings okay. so yes she she wholeheartedly supported me becoming graphic designer and was happy that i um you know went uh this path because it's still like graphic design yeah it's not fine art but it's somehow related i mean i did yeah. education so layout i mean design is design it, it is field related somehow yeah. still yeah. Plus, I, I, I've been very fortunate for many, many years. I had a job, um, good job for the same company. And the company, uh, which was designing and making, not making, but designing maps and signs, so like road sign, directional signs mm -hmm. and maps. Apps. So there was lots of technical work, and which is fine because I did not have to be like instantaneously creative. Mm -hmm. like, all day for like you know for eight hours every day i i could do this technical stuff do it good work fine and uh i still like had still like keeping my creative juices to to yeah. do my fine art yeah 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 okay and how was your in what way was your mom critical like what would she say uh, yeah, as I said, she, she she never believed that it can turn into a real career. She was thinking that, like, yeah, there are, like, so many artists, like, who are you? Nobody knows you. Again, it was all before, you know, internet, like, um, stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. Really, like, really, really what happened, uh, all that. Uh, and, um, and she was also, like, you know, um, she loved my work, but she was my best critic in terms of, like, she was always she, she, she was always telling me the truth. Like, if she didn't yeah. like something, she thought, you know, I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And she was always, like, I, in most instances, I agreed with her. Like, okay, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was, and I'm, I mean, it's really sad that, like, I, it's really sad that my mom actually never lived. Like, she, she passed away in 2020, and that's when my, uh, career as an artist as a I you know hope I'm allowed to say that it kind of like you know it went up and I started getting sales commissions uh, acceptable you know I'm accepted into national shows and all this fun stuff so okay well you know she knows <laughs> I'm sure she, she, knows. She, she, I'm knows. Sure she does yeah I, I think of yeah, I, I think of, of my mom as well, because, you know, uh, my mom passed away in 2005. And, um, you know, she, she knows that I'm like, I'm married, and I'm very happy. And I, and then you know, she would love my husband and like all this. Stuff. You know, they know, it's okay. They know. <laughs> they yes. know. Um, I'm sorry for your loss. Um, that's pretty recent. And that really sucks. Thank you. Um, Thank you really. Yes. Um, okay, so, um, okay, so Mrs. Lamb, what is art in your opinion? Wow, wow, I, I knew it's come. Uh, you know, it's like, I think it's like, uh, there's an obvious answer. And at the same time, it's like, that's a very complex question because yeah, what is art really? Um, I think, well, first of all, obviously, um, it's art is, well, I wouldn't say an object, but probably not an, not necessarily an object because there are like many kinds of art. I think like, uh yeah there's like visual performing like music all mm -hmm. art right mm -hmm. um i think what unites it all probably uh, i think the creativity is so it has to be created by us humans mm -hmm. i don't really believe that you know artificial intelligence creates art it's okay. it from somewhere combining so it's like you know but that's a whole different story okay maybe one day it will be there will be another question and another answer for what artificial intelligence is, but now we're not talking about it, I believe. So, uh, yeah, there is an element of creating, creation. So, uh, and to me, also, it, well, there are some feelings, feelings and emotions always involved. So I don't think it's like you can call it art if there are like no feelings or maybe people won't um 
appreciate it and perceive it as an object of art if it's like if, if it has no feelings or if no feelings were put into it and then on another end it's like you know how we perceive it it's all it's all different for everybody so then we can like some of it don't have to like some of it we you know but maybe other people do and um anyways um uh, i guess it's really really um whether you know what kind of art one some people like some people don't it's uh, it's very um subjective and mm -hmm. that's why i believe it's like i'm not jealous to people who have to judge you know art exhibition because uh -huh. i think it's a very very hard job yeah yeah all of this okay um so then when when you were saying that in a way art what art is is an obvious thing versus another way it's really complicated what would be like the obvious part I think obvious part would be that uh, this is okay, an object or like whether, uh, you know, physical object or um, non-physical, which is like what, music, mm -hmm. it's probably not physical object, <laughs> um, that was created by uh, another individual or group of individuals, right? So that's, I guess, somehow obvious. Okay. And, and created not just like, um uh created um i would say like many okay when somebody's building like you know like a house or a bridge or just like an object like, you know any kind of like object it's you can all say it's like yeah it was created whether it's art or not that's another question so i guess art. <laughs> so uh it's not just something handmade or made otherwise but um I don't know, like maybe decorated by the lack of other word to better describe it. Mm -hmm. um, and again, as I said, yeah, um, emotions, feelings are involved. So it's, I would say it's less, uh, more decorative, less practical or not practical at all. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So um, art is not practical. Uh, that's how you look at it. I think art is, uh, if like practical means like, you know, you need it to like survive. Yes and no. Mm -hmm. I would say if, it, it depends on what, you know, what kind of survival we are talking about. Just okay. physically surviving is one thing, living your life is another thing, and then art is absolutely necessary. And more than that, we all know how art is, um, you know, actually curing people, helping people. We all know about art therapy. We know about um, how, well, I mean, on my own example, like, you know, how I started painting animals because that was my own art therapy. I, I just had to, like, you know, to get it out of my system or keep it in my system. I, mean, I, I just had to paint my cat. Mm -hmm. So yeah. no one told me I had to paint my cat. That's it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was my way to cope with it. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um... Yeah, I quite agree with the part about really both about the object and the part about making the object of art. Um, even if, for example, like you said, in the case of music, um, because, you know, while you're playing a piece of music, it's like the sound isn't solid or anything. But I guess in the case of music, you could say, you know, if it's like recorded, in a cassette or a CD or a vinyl, a long play, you know, it's still. Yeah, that's maybe, you know, that's an object. A physical object, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been uh, like placed in an object, so we can have that. And and I also like specifically like the part about making the object of art because for my personal uh, motives, I guess, it immediately discards something like the ready-mades, for example, and certain types of thing that I, personally don't consider art anymore. Um, and I, I like that a lot because indeed, uh, I think that for something to be art, even if there's lots of things that can be made, like you were saying, you can make a bridge, you can make a house, uh, you can make a chair, 
you can make a painting. It's like you still have to interfere with the objects and change them as you are interfering with them. And, you know, you know, the human has to kind of interact with the materials, with the objects and do something to them that changes them somehow, you know? So yeah. I like that a lot because also, and, and also like to overlap with what we were talking uh, about music, it's like, you know, you have to make the music. Music doesn't just happen. Oh, you, yeah. have, you have to play the instrument. You have to make it do something, you know, um, even... Yeah, other, you have to compose the music, which never existed. You have, you have to, you have to yeah. write it. Yeah, you have to write it. You have to compose it. And like, even in the case of other things that I also, I don't know if I consider art like performances. You know, you still have to kind of like act it out. You know, sure. You know, you have to do something physical with your body to kind of convey some information or like the installations, yeah. which I also don't know. You still have to like change the space into something. You know, so like it's still. It's like actively involving the person's body to do stuff, you know. So, what do you what do you think about that? Do you does that? Sound yeah, right? I, I absolutely. I think I absolutely agree with that. It's like yeah, it involves like whether whether whatever materials are whether it's like you know person's body or uh, you know object. Like let it be like found object as long as there is like something is like done about it as long as these objects are like saying something different not just like okay um, which reminds me like you know my son's favorite joke is about like you know some let's say you know um exhibits or museums where like yeah i feel like i want to like you know take my baseball hat or put it on the floor and people will be looking at it yeah and, you know, yeah, like, yeah this cut to me isn't it? like you know art object which is yes. not i think yeah in this case. <laughs> So that I guess something we like, you know, both thought about. Um, but yeah, no, I absolutely agree with you and the way you described it. Okay, yeah, and and I also like the other part, which I don't remember if you told me what which ones were the not obvious, the not obvious one. Uh, what did I about uh you know how how art has like an obvious part which is like the making making of the object of art and then the not obvious one oh no the complicated oh yeah I guess I, I was saying yeah that's so that's pretty much like yeah the obvious to me and to like what, what that's what we discussed and like but but so that's kind of like simple so I guess it's not but no, yeah, I mean, yes, it's, that's it's, all I meant. That is, that is a complicated. It is a complex question. Yeah, no, it's it's a complex complex question. But why do you think it's complex? What do you think makes it complex? Oh, I think just because there are like so many, so many parts to it. So many, you know, it encompasses so many things that may be completely like you know completely different things but still these things have something in common um you know uh yeah like you know like there's like music there's like poetry um writing performing dancing like all so many different different kinds of you know that um are results of human activity like creative activity and yeah i guess uh that's coming back to what what unites it all. Uh, that's that they were done by humans. I don't think like well, animals like animals don't create art like consciously, right? Maybe mm -hmm. like some spider web can be beautiful and they can say, sure, oh yeah, yeah. That's, like yeah, that's bizarre. But I don't think spiders actually mean it. <laughs> Maybe they do. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. I've uh, very recently, you know, in the last few months or something, I've come into, I've like uh, stumbled into some like um, I don't, I don't know what they are. The thing is that these people are talking about how there are animals that have that do certain things as part of their mate mating ritual that mm -hmm. look very much like art. Um, and I think that's very interesting because you know we we tend to, and, you know, I think also, or, you know, sometimes, or I used to think, I don't know, the thing is that generally we think that art is uh, exclusively human. 
which, you know, it, it is in large part a human activity because not all animals necessarily do like artistic things apparently, but there apparently there are some except, exceptions to that where there's, um, uh, there's a fish that as part of the mating ritual, he makes in the bottom of the ocean on the sand, he makes like this mandala, like texture uh -huh. relief thing. And, uh, I don't know. It's kind of amazing. <laughs> and it's, I think it is. I think it is. Yeah. You it's know, yeah. As an animal artist. I want to believe that this is true and <laughs> animals create art. Yeah. Be because, you know, and sometimes, sometimes I think that animals are, you know, the life of an a animal is very simple in a way, in the sense that it's kind of like the cycle of life in a way, as I was taught, it's like, you know, you're born, you, reproduce you age and you die so like that's it's something like that sometimes in the case of animals you die sooner because if you're out in the wild you are predators and all this stuff but in, for the most part is you're born you know the animal is born reproduces ages and dies and so like the artistic what looks like art to us the an, an animal doing that as part of their mating ritual i think is a simplification maybe of like why we do things and maybe even why we do art so it's like, um, maybe not strictly for the purpose of calling a mate, but maybe sometimes it will result in that, but also for our survival, for yeah. our perpetuation uh, uh, as a as a whole, as a species. Um, I don't know why or how, but um, I like the idea of that a lot because, you know, of, of course, you know that we are, of humans are of nature. And we are not exempt from, you know, birth, reproduction, aging, and dying. We're not. Absolutely not. <laughs> um, and it's like, I have often thought that we overcomplicate things sometimes. Uh, just the way that we direct our lives for whatever reason. And maybe it's not really that complicated. You know, maybe <laughs> maybe it is just about just survival somehow you know what do you what do you think about that? I guess that's how it is. I guess okay. It's like just living simple life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The create the creativity that you were talking about made me think of also the overlap there is with actually with your parents with engin engineering. Mm -hmm. Because I've been recently thinking of also about how how much problem solving there is in art. So not just making the the drawing or the painting, but you know, like you when you were finding your way in your career like in the long term in the overall that's also problem solving and it's like i mean wouldn't that be akin to engineering you know sure and you know i have my parents genes for sure and also i think that this problem solving and logical thinking uh it is absolutely necessary in art it's uh at least like you know at what I do and I'm representational artist and I have to think I have to think with each and every piece I have to think about the drawing about composition about perspective about proportions about rules of light about you know like all these things and yeah there's like lots of logical thinking and planning that goes into each and every painting it's like not like even the smallest one even if like even if I don't really like run it all like inside my head but sometimes even when i'm doing like a short sketch it, it still it goes into it because it's already in my head and i'm pretty sure in yours you're doing you know you're making the uh, beautiful drawings and you know how much <laughs> logical thinking goes into into it like yes all i described so. okay um i guess i should have asked this asked you this earlier but um would you say that the time that you spent as a graphic designer, would you say that it has influenced at all any when you're making your paintings? Um, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot. And on one hand, I may say that, yeah, probably maybe I wish like things were different and I could have had more uh, and and I could have started uh, sooner. Could have started painting sooner. And um, God, I maybe it would be nice if I 
to get more art education, more, you know, painting practice, all that. But I guess, you know, we take things as they go and sometimes we can't change things or make things happen sooner than they are. We just need to appreciate what life has given us, not, you know, not to be proactive, but, you know, what happened already happened and I'm grateful for all, like, you know, um, the time and not 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 my job on not only my job paid my bills but you know again I studied I learned I went again to the art institute I got a degree in graphic design um, versus like the first time when I just came to the United States I only did like six months part-time program pretty much like learning how to use computers and utilizing the skills like I had before because you know I was I, I had my artistic training so I knew about balance composition proportions I could create a nice looking layout if I I only needed the tools but then I went uh, like 10 years later I went back to the art institute for degree program and um, that was a lot the, not just like learning software Software, but illustration, but uh, you know, many things that are applicable in fine art as well. So it is a related field, and many things like you know, there's lots of lot of overlap there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mrs. Lamb, what is beauty in your opinion? beauty okay uh you know when i think about beauty all this um like the quote from dostoevsky comes to my mind that beauty will save okay. the world <laughs> uh, what, um, what did you beautiful what the beauty will save the world ah yes yes of course but i'm sure you heard that <laughs> yes and um, um i i don't know if this is true but beauty certainly makes this world a better place uh beauty in in my opinion i think it is um first of all i think it's um hmm, i think that's a more like more difficult question <laughs> than the uh -huh. question about, <laughs> about what is art like we, we all know what like oh this is we all can say okay this is beautiful and this is not beautiful i think the beautiful again, object, painting, or music, or that's really something that makes you uh, pause and uh, and feel, feel um, something. It's like, um, not necessarily like, you know, not always happy thoughts. It could be sad, it could be mm -hmm. like, you know, it just can also be beautiful. So uh, I think in, uh, yeah, that's like, that's the uh, beauty, beauty, it's, it, it, it doesn't have necessarily to be necessarily a work of art, right? It can right. be, you know, beautiful sunset. And I don't know if anybody has ever seen a not beautiful sunset. Right. <laughs> yes, because like, even, even when it's like cloudy and stuff, it's kind of, it's still kind of amazing to see. It's still kind of amazing, and again, I think because it, like you know, it provokes, it raises, it it, it makes us feel something. Mm -hmm. I don't think you can like you know like look at the sunset and like feel nothing. Well, maybe okay, that's another day. Like sun goes down again. So what? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, um, I, okay, go ahead. Oh no, no, no! Tell me, please, tell me. <laughs> Okay, okay, what I was thinking, uh, yeah, what, did, what I was saying, yeah, yeah, the sun goes down and so what, so I guess that's again, that's like very, very um, uh, subjective once again, because what's beautiful for one person does not is not necessarily beautiful for another person. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. you think, oh, that's beautiful and it just stops you in your tracks and I will walk by and say, well, and wouldn't even notice it, mm -hmm. right? right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that is that is definitely true in some cases, and I think that situation is the reason for which some people 
like to say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I really dislike that uh, quote, whoever said it, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, because I just, I feel like it's a cop out, but okay. Um, why? I mean, I have read some Dostoevsky, but not very much. Um, why does he say that beauty will save the world? Well, um, I'm, I think, well, he's, yeah, he said it in his novel, um, Idiot. So, uh, well, yeah, the main character, he is using this expression. I believe uh, Dostoevsky himself, he was, you, he was referring to the same thought uh, in his notes somewhere else. So it kind of, apparently this thought was really, you know, um, he maybe believed in it. Maybe he was trying to uh, prove it somehow. Um, but in fact, this, 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 this exact, this novel where this quote is taken from, I don't think beauty really saved the world there because it didn't really, you know, it's still a tragic story. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. For that particular, um, uh, work. Uh, but mm, I honestly, honestly, I don't know what what's in his head when he uh, thought about it. But I think it's a beautiful thought, and I think yeah, yeah. we all need beauty. And I think if um, again, what what um, you said is that you don't like this. Um, expression that beauty is in the eye of the holder. And I agree with you. I agree with you. I think uh, so because this way, uh, like everybody, you know, like anything can be beautiful. Well, on the other hand, it's hard, like, yeah, we all know that like, yeah, the standards, like overall beauty standards, we all know about, you know, how it changed over the years. Sure. Uh, well, in this case, you no know, longer like, Talking for some reason about female beauty, I don't know why it's all about female beauty. <laughs> but um, I also think uh, that uh, each and every person, uh, I and I, I think for artists, like we can, we really can, um, and at least that's how I see it. Uh, to try to find the beauty even in something that other people may look at and say no it's not beautiful mm -hmm. like right when you when you decide to make it your drawing when i decide to paint it then um yeah sometimes it's like yeah i see oh that's a beautiful object and i paint a beautiful object you know that's actually that's like sometimes it's a trap because when your painting doesn't like my painting then does not look as beautiful as this object yeah. so, um and sometimes i have to work with very poor photo references like i'm using photo references for my portraits for my paintings and sometimes they are uh, like in my opinion good uh, paintings come out of using not that perfect references. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, like we make things better, we can see something in, in in this like whatever reference we are using, and make it better. Mm -hmm. It's like it's better than trying to just to copy a you know photograph. Mm -hmm. That why we do it's a good photograph. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I think, um, I guess we would have to, you know, for the beauty will save the world quote, I guess we would have to know what Dostoevsky or, you know, the character in the book, I guess we'd have to know what he meant by saving the world. Uh, because, you know, while you were talking, yeah, I was thinking, <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking that like, maybe because it's like, what does that mean? Does saving the world mean that like all evil will be eliminated, for example, or does it mean that like all uh, all poverty or like all hunger will be eliminated, for example, or does it mean that does it mean that, for example, just if if we take one person's life, you know, I have my life, and 
um, I'm just, you know, I'm having a bad day or I'm just having a normal day or whatever, whatever kind of day, doesn't matter. And I experience, you know, the feeling of beauty because I saw some flowers or because I saw a sunset, like we were saying just now. And, you know, looking at these things and like remembering that, you know, nature, mother nature is there and that I am of nature and, you know, she's, you know, mother nature is just kind of continuing along and or whatever, whatever happens when one experiences that. Um, and then maybe it reminds me when I see that stuff, when I feel that it reminds me that I'm alive and that um you know, experience just maybe just experiencing is really good, makes me feel really good mm -hmm. about myself. And I feel better if I felt bad, you know. Um, so I guess, I guess I would be curious about what he meant by beauty will save the world. Because I mean, I think, I think the second example of like, in a person's life, like, it doesn't have to be everyone's life at the same time. It can be right. saving a person's life or a person's day. <laughs> You know, or just yeah. making us better people, you know, it's just yes. like, and, yeah, and which, which, which well, like, you know, brings another thing to mind, like, to me, like, I think it's like it, um, in relation to, you know, positivity and um, kindness, mm -hmm. and so I think, like, maybe that's what he meant, maybe it can make us, uh, each person, better, mm -hmm. And as a result, maybe eventually, if everybody will, like, you know, all people will become better people, then eventually. If, if more people, more people. Yes, more, more people more than before. More people yeah. will become better and better and better people. Okay, okay. Yes, I like that. Okay. All right. Well, um, Mrs. Lamb, we have reached the 50 minute mark uh, of our conversation. So I'm going to start closing it out here. Um, why don't you tell our viewers and listeners uh, what are you working on lately? Do you want to add anything to uh, you know whatever uh, the conversation? Do you have any projects you're working on that you're really excited about? Where your work can be found? Uh, sure. Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Thanks so much for having me here. You're welcome. It's really, really interesting and thought provoking and fun conversation. Thank you. <laughs> and so, what I'm um, okay, where my work can be found, my work can be found on Instagram, um, my work can be found um, on my website. I'm represented, I'm currently represented by uh, Reiner Fine Arts gallery in charleston south carolina and our main exhibit gallery uh in um ligonier pennsylvania it's uh, near pittsburgh where i live uh right now i'm i'm working well right now i finished this painting almost finished i have to look at it again it's like <laughs> another question when the work is done it's like i guess when that when nothing is bothering me about this work yes. anymore like as, I, as i'm looking at this piece on a computer screen, like <laughs> I, I see a few things I need to yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to, I'm about to make several, maybe a, maybe three or four, or maybe just two larger pieces now, because a local gallery here in Pittsburgh, they asked me to take part in, a, in an exhibit, in the exhibit, uh, okay. and they are interested in large works, and I wanted to try large scale, by large, I don't mean like, you know, like 13 feet wide, but I mean what I mean, like close to like, you know, uh, like three by five. Okay. Three. That's so, big still. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's much bigger than what I'm usually painting. So yes. that's a interesting experience. So that's on my plate right now to, you know, make these pieces. And I'm working, as I think I mentioned before, um, more on uh, human portraits in addition nice. to animal portraits. I'm working, I'm taking workshops, I'm about to go take another workshop from Anna Rose Bain, who is one of my favorite living artists, I love her work and she's an amazing person, so I'm looking forward to these workshops of her, and um, yeah, so I'm uh, painting more people, adding people to my animals, uh, animals to my people, so combining the two, and it's very interesting, I think, um, interesting subject to me, because I want to explore um emotions connection between 
human and animals and hope they love animals and I want to keep painting them. Okay. Okay, that sounds fantastic. Congratulations <laughs> on this new challenge of the big paintings and all of the, you know, the galleries asking you to make stuff. Uh, that's awesome yes you're welcome so all right so thank you everyone for watching and listening special thanks to my guest Yelena for agreeing to talk to me and for her time if you'd like to support Yelena my podcast myself or all three all corresponding links will be in the caption and make sure you like this video and leave a comment so we know you were here with us also remember to subscribe to my audiovisual channel so uh, thank you everyone and see you next time bye